will take his team to the big dance, led by point guard Kenny Harris. And the scoring of Tyrone McCoy. Kenny Crumb's Cardinals flew past the competition during the regular season, but now it's title time, and Greg Miner will be a major role player for the Birds. But to seal the deal, the Metro Conference Player of the Year, Clifford Rozier, will have to soar to new heights. VCU the Metro next. Conference Championship Game. Today's game is being brought to you by Budweiser. By Gillette. And by Buick. Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the site of the Metro Conference Tournament and this afternoon's championship game between the Rams of VCU and the Cardinals of Louisville. Hello again, everybody, and what a great couple of days we have had here in Louisville. It has been truly electric, and of course, today it is title time. The winner of the Metro Conference Championship Tournament will be crowned following today's game. Right now, let us explain to you how these two teams advanced into the championship finale. Louisville, best team in the conference, had a first round bye, then dusted off UNC Charlotte while it was VCU winning over South Florida and then stopping Virginia Tech, the upset-minded Hokies who knocked off Tulane. It's the Rams who are now also in the championship game. Right now, let's take you down to the floor and the two guys who will call all the action today, Fred White and Terry Gannon. All right, thank you very much, Jim, and welcome courtside, everyone. And Terry, this is a no-mystery game. You get to this stage of the season, you know exactly who you're playing, you know exactly what you're playing for. Yeah, and you know each other, too. You play each other a couple of times. Two teams playing for a couple of different things, though. Louisville knows they're in the NCAA tournament. Could be as high as a number three seed with a win today. BCU thinks they're in, doesn't know for sure. They don't want to sit around and watch and see if they're in. They want to see where they're going. You don't get to the championship game of a postseason tournament without outstanding players, and we're going to see some here this afternoon. I think a guy who's had a great tournament, Kenny Harris, the point guard for BCU, not only has put up the points but also has handled the basketball important for him to handle the pressure today well against louisville and then on the break against the pressure tyrone mccoy a medium range jump shooter has to hit those against the pressure to pull louisville out of it and inside sharon mills playing great can go up and down with the cardinals and also play inside athletically with rosier and the cardinals are so athletic in their own right boy they launched a storm in the second half here in freedom hall last night 19,000 hopping out of their seats last night and i think a guy who would be very important for them today greg minor at the two guard position really a small forward playing at the two hard to handle and cliff rosier will he play with that intensity the entire game tonight fred again the matchup in the championship game of the metro tournament the commonwealth and the louisville cardinals and we'll be back to meet the starters Good afternoon a city that does a great job of hosting tournaments may have a heck of a championship game on their hands here this afternoon another sellout crowd at freedom hall in louisville Virginia Commonwealth and Louisville set to go. Let's join public address announcer John Tong and meet the starting lineups. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kentucky Fair and Exposition Center and Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky. For the thrill and excitement of championship college basketball in the Metro Conference, as the University of Louisville Cardinals host the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth in the championship game. And now, introducing the starting lineups. For the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth, at forward, number 22, 6'5", a sophomore, from Bethune, South Carolina, Tyrone McCoy. At forward for Louisville, number 50, 6'6", a junior, from Louisville Central, Dwayne. For Virginia Commonwealth, number 40, 68A senior from Snow Hill, Maryland, Sharon Mills. And forward for Louisville, number 24, 68A senior from Alexandria, Virginia, Troy Smith. At center for Virginia Commonwealth. Number 42, 6'9", junior, from St. Petersburg in Russia, Eugene Kasorin. At center for Louisville, number 44, 6'9", a sophomore, from Brandon, Florida, Clifford Rozier. At guard 
for Virginia Commonwealth, number four, 6'3", a junior, from Columbia, South Carolina, Terrence Gibson. And guard for Louisville, number 23, 6'6", a junior, from Sandersville, Georgia, Greg Miner. For Virginia Commonwealth, number 12, 6'1", a junior, from Petersburg, Virginia, Kenny Harris. And at guard for Louisville, number 10, 6'1", a sophomore, from Statesboro, Georgia, Keith Lebrie. And the head coach for Virginia Commonwealth, Sonny Smith. And the head coach for the University of Louisville, Denny Crum. The Cardinals are in at 19 and 8, Virginia Commonwealth in at 20 and 8. The Cardinals won the regular season championship, and now they are down to it in the Metro Conference Tournament. Championship game on tap, and we'll be back with tip-off right after this. They have won 11 regular season championships, including the one this year. Last year in this tournament, VCU beat Louisville in the first round. Again, the starters today for the Rams. Up front, it'll be Tyrone McCoy and Sharon Mills. Eugene Kasurin in the middle with Gibson and Harris at the guards. Kenny Harris, an outstanding point man. Louisville with Smith and Morton up front. Player of the year, Quint Rozier in the middle. Lagree at the point and Greg Miner at the two guard for the Cardinals here this afternoon. The officials today, and a strong crew it is, Jerry Donaghy, Tom O'Neill, and Danny Hooker work this Metro Conference Tournament championship game. They've met seven times before. And Louisville leading the series 5-2, 4-1 here in Freedom Hall. Virginia Commonwealth in just their second year in the Metro Conference Tournament. That last meeting was in overtime, and Louisville won at 90-88. They won the earlier matchup this year by five. There have been two good games between these two teams. And now we are underway with the Metro Conference Tournament Championship game. And the first ball contested. That might be a symbol of things to come here today. I think it will be. I think, you know, Louisville played the one game. They got the jitters out of their system yesterday, Fred. BCU playing as well as they have all year. McCoy short. Rozier grabs the rebound. He had a big night last night. Rozier with 20 points and 10 rebounds. Picked up his 17th double-double of the year last night. And the matchup on the outside. Kenny Harris against Keith Legree. Legree has got to be able to contain Harris today. I think that'll be one of the keys. Just keep him in front of him. Don't let him penetrate. Wayne Morton off target. Rebound battle, and Troy Smith had it and was fouled. Tell you what, there's a guy that they do not want in foul trouble. Well, that's Eugene Kasurin. I thought they got Sharon Mills for a moment as Eugene Kasurin that picked up the foul down there. Well, they don't want him in trouble either. He's had 18 rebounds in the two games in this tournament. They need him on the boards. He's not a big scorer. No, he's not, but he will contest on the boards and body a little bit. But uh, the first guy you talked about, that's the guy they really can't lose. Sharon Mills, the one player inside for VCU who can go up and down the floor and can also uh, stay with a Rozier inside, a Troy Smith inside, maybe even a Morton driving to the hole. Troy Smith gets the first two points of the ball game. He had a little bit of an off night last night, got six, but he opens proceedings here today, and Louisville takes the first lead. And the up and down, after the made free throws, after the made baskets, the press by Louisville. If VCU can handle that and hit the shot, they miss that one, but make them pay for pressing. Well, the long way to telling what this game's going to do, and right away a turnover by Louisville and Fred. You know, Denny Crum yesterday kind of sent a message to his starters in that game. First half of the game, they just played horribly. Had no heart, Denny said, no courage, no intensity. And he had him on the bench, and at halftime, well, he turned things around. And Sonny Smith has just kind of tap danced through the last couple of weeks. Done a great job, the Metro Coach of the Year this year. Louisville with only 22 points at halftime yesterday came storming back in 171 to 59 over UNC Charlotte. Now Sharon Mills with a fadeaway off target. And Terrence Gibson tries to stick back hand to it. Kasurin with a pump fake and finally got one down for the Rams. Three tries on the offensive glass. And the guards getting involved too. Both teams have guards that can rebound. And also, in terms of a Gibson for VCU and the Louisville guards taking out low. Well, UNC Charlotte yesterday kept the crowd in Freedom Hall out of the game for a half. Roy Smith with a miss from the side, and now Kenny Harris is going to push it a little bit. 
Can't find much help. Gibson back outside to McCoy, and he struck a three. And all along, Tyrone McCoy has been a key to this club, I think. Hitting the medium-range jump shot, he can hit the three. If he hits it against the pressure today, Louisville will not be able to put that same type of defensive presence on the floor. Cardinals were waiting just a moment there for Wayne Morton to tie his shoe, and now he's back in action. Rozier drops it down inside to him. Nice fake in the lane and a little fadeaway good. Good athletic ability, Wayne Morton. Well, he's got a great second half of the year. McCoy with a fake, and the shot good. Hey, we're underway. Here we go. <laughs> I think the deal is on now. We're not waiting until halftime tonight. VCU by three. Troy Smith. Minor to agree from the top of the circle. Off target with a three. Rozier. That's really a tough matchup for Eugene Kassorn inside. When he gets caught on Cliff Rozier, just doesn't have the strength to keep him off the glass. And there's the pressure, Fred. Take away and Minor in the middle of the break. Cops it. Four different Cardinals have scored their eight points. Now the pressure and the crowd. To Surin, to Gibson. They've got McCoy open for two. Boom. You know, and that's a great execution against the pressure. And if McCoy can knock that down again, Louisville's just not going to be able to stay in that pressure. And throughout that whole series, Kenny Harris really handled the ball a lot in that series. Louisville's got to take the ball out of Kenny Harris's hand. VCU is four for eight. Louisville three for six. So both clubs getting a good start. Rozier tangled up, double teamed, and got rid of it to Troy Smith with a little dump hook in there. Four for Troy Smith, and he's off to a good start today. And here's the pressure again. They go right through the middle of the floor. Get it back to this man. Yep, they want to have Kenny Harris handle it as much as possible. Sherron Mills with a soft touch inside. They're just exchanging the lead right now. Long pass went right down the middle and then was taken away. Terrence Gibson left it there for Kenny Harris and on up to McCoy. He's got the hot hand. Oh. That's a trade. Hey, now. I mean, he is pumped. He's got 10 points already. We've only played 4 minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> he is that great. He'll score 100. He's got 80 of <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> Minor to Troy Smith. Rozier looking. He wants to go inside. Now he finds Smith on the block. And inside out to Minor. Three won't fall. Rebound battled out of bounds. Irwin Webb checks into the Louisville lineup. We have time out here. 15-22 left in our first half. We'll be back after this from Budweiser. The start of this ball game. 14-10 VCU. In four and a half minutes, it's been an active ball game. And Fred Tyrone McCoy making me look like I know what I'm talking about. He's got 10 points right away, four out of five, and hitting those open jump shots. And they're created because of the traps and the pressure up the court by Louisville. Good shooting start, both ball clubs. Sharon Mills goes by Rozier, takes the little jumper short. And Rozier came back to get the rebound. Boy, is he active. He was going the wrong way when the shot went up and got back down to the basket. The things that a lot of fans don't see in Cliff Rozier. Sometimes up and down. You know, last night had a great second half, not a good first half, but I'll tell you, he plays hard. Good offensive rebounder. Didn't get that one, but Troy Smith did. Troy Smith has six points. He's already matched last night's total in five minutes and 15 seconds. He got six last night. He has six already here this afternoon. Rams lead by two. Derwin Webb now on Kenny Harris. So Keith Legree over here on Terrence Gibson. A little bigger, stronger guy guarding Kenny Harris. McCoy. It up to Kasurin. They'll shoot him out there, and Miner came out to cover him because of it. Terrence Gibson stuck a three. See, when you, you've got shooters, Fred, that like VCU does. You know, McCoy can shoot the three, Harris can shoot the three, so can Gibson. It's awfully tough to apply that pressure because you're going to give away some open jump shots. And right now, Louisville, even in the half court, giving up some easy shots, and VCU knocking them down. VCU's hit three three-point shots in this game. They also bring Chris Brower off the bench to shoot it. About as good as anybody. Now a turnover. Third turnover charge to Louisville. The Cardinals are down five right now. What he's done already today, and they've gone to him too. They've tried to establish him on the, on the low block. A little inside-outside game working for Denny Crum. 
We saw some of that last night, especially in the first half. Then he up and yelling at his ball club. Very quick mark of a ball club when you don't care who has, has the hot hand, just recognize it and get it to him no matter who it is. The three pointers. And VCU able to do that because of this man, Kenny Harris. Kenny Harris can score and he can distribute the basketball. He can do a lot of things. Now they clear for him. Right, look at him. Create a shot. He does. Kenny Harris. But if you see him tap the top of his head, that means they're going to go down to the baseline, just clear for Kenny Harris. And he knows he can take Derwin Webb. Well, when you got a point guard that can pass it as well as he can and create shots for himself like that? Yep. Thank you very much. Good defensive player, too. Roy Smith. Uh, Aspie now on Rozier. I don't recognize it. I don't get the ball to Cliff. 13-15. Left in first half action here, and the Rams are up seven. Now remember, they're doing this without their best player, too. Eight and two without... Kendrick Warren, and you see a little spin move inside. Kenny Harris knew he could take Derwin Webb. He called that play. Everyone went down to the blocks and just cleared for him. Yeah, but can he hang in the air and lean and shoot? Well, <laughs> he's up there for a while, isn't he? There's Brower in ball game now for the Rams. That'll be the Sox. Javon Mills. Oh, it's got a nice soft touch. From Sox to no Sox. Brower to Mills. <laughs> And he does have a nice little touch inside. And Cardinals now getting back into that same first half lag that they were in last night. Keith Lagree. That's a three. And they're going to let him shoot that. They're going to make sure that Lagree proves that he can shoot that three. The top of the key jump shot. Nobody came out to guard it. Now all five Cardinals starters have scored. Six point lead. Rams. Here we go again. The clear for Kenny Harris. The ball knocked loose in there. Rozier tipping it around. He's going to control it. To Legree. And up come the Cardinals. Legree's moving him quickly. Trying to get close to the basketball again. And Rodney Ashby down low on him. Gets the foul. And they really looked at him, Fred, early in the game and kept Cliff Rozier in that high post area. His first foul in this game. Second foul, excuse me. Could be an upset going in the Big Ten today. Seton Hall cruising. Well, I tell you what, Pirates might be a sneak team in the Final Four. They're playing well right now. They've been misfiring a lot this year, but a lot of people sure. happy in the Big East right now. They bring a big <laughs> sigh of relief that Syracuse is going down on probation. They allowed them to play in the tournament. A lot of people are going to breathe a lot easier if Syracuse doesn't win that thing. Legree, Loader, Rozier. He's triple team. He gets it right back to Legree. Too strong with it. But Derwin Webb chases it down. But he needs to be a shooter on Rozier's side so he can kick it back out and get it to him. Oh, oh. How strong is he? Four for Rozier. And he got whacked when he took the shot and was able to get it down anyway. Mills fouled him. Right to the side, the angle. Nice pass by Keith Legree. The little touch pass. Brower tries to strip, and Mills tries to strip. Rozier's arm off and gets the arm, but he gave up the bucket as well. <laughs> that was Sharon Mills he took up with him. That's a big guy. Yep. He didn't get a little point guard. He just carried him right with him. Rozier short with the try. The Cardinals not giving up on it. Derwin Webb with a save, and now McCoy takes it away. And look at Mills run the floor. They threw it right between two BCU players. Didn't know who he wanted to throw it to. Their turnover charge the Rams. The Sonics must say, we're doing all right. 11.27 left and a half. BCU up four. And Denny Clem talking about it. And welcome back to Freedom Hall. Let's quickly go across court to Jim Brinson. Thank you very much. I just kind of uh, listened in on Sonny Smith's instructions, and he indicated that what he wants to try to do is take away the inside-outside game. Wants to take away the low-high situations for the Cardinals. Let's see if, indeed, his defense can respond to that. Uh, it's been working for the Cardinals, Jim, uh, so far. Rozier in the high post for the most part until the last play, and they've had Troy Smith down low. But now Cliff in the game without Smith, and they'll adjust a little bit. That's going to be a key for VCU the entire game. Wayne Martin. Brewer. Legree looking inside. And now we have a whistle blowing away from the ball and the foul called down along the baseline. Tommy O'Neill made the call on the Fred. 
watching James Brewer handle the ball, he was a guy that really lit the emotional fire in Freedom Hall for Louisville. Hit the big three last night, didn't he? And, and, you know, you get a dunk and the crowd goes nuts, but threes have become that too. And BCU's have, having to call a timeout here, Fred, to get the ball in. Having a hard time with it. We have a timeout here. 10.56 left in our first half. We're back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. This legal brief is sponsored by the law offices of Rod Sager and Associates. Mr. Hi right, guys, thank you very much. Uh, taking a quick little listen to head coach Denny Crum of the Louisville Cardinals just a moment ago. He says, I like the way the game is going. He likes the tempo that his team is playing. He just wants to create a little more intensity defensively. That's what got him back last night. Yep. They, what, when they get to creating it, <laughs> there was some intensity. Very, very creative, yeah. Now a foul on Wayne Morton, a little bit too much intensity that time, perhaps. Raycom is pleased to welcome our viewers, tuning in on Prime Network and their nationwide family of regional sports cable affiliates. Veteran coaches, Denny Crum in his 22nd year, Sonny Smith, 17th. I'll tell you what, VCU having trouble getting the ball in a moment ago, used the timeout. I'm not so sure even though players are taught to call that timeout. The first half, Fred, you throw the ball up and you take your chances, you try to get it in. Timeouts are so precious now with the TV and you get the TV timeouts. Tough to use those up early. Good point. You'd rather lose a possession than a timeout or anything. Right? I would. You got a chance, you throw it up, and it's almost like a jump ball. If you got two guys standing there, you might get it anyway. Terrence Gibson working against Legree, picks up the dribble. Kassurin at the top of the circle. Not painful, he'll fire from there, does it this time. Now takes the dribble and a little fade away. Might have, maybe should have taken the first shot. Good defense by Morton, too, stepping out. Blur. Ball was contested down there. Gibson wins the rebound battle. Well, they're knocking each other around, too. A little physical right now. Gibson just hit the deck, and now Derwin Webb trying for the steal. Is the turnover. Sonny Smith said, no, it should be ours. Sonny let them know about it. Yeah, a little talking going on out there, too. Terrence Gibson and James Brewer were having a little chat. There's Brewer at the other end. A little strip by Kenny Harris. Comes around the side. Nice defense. And then the battle. And VCU wins the battle but loses the war as they turn it over at the other end. Sonny Smith really thought it should have been his ball. Didn't get the call. Nice hit. I'll tell you what, hustle by Eugene Kassur in there. You wouldn't often see the European players that emotional. He was really after it. There, all of a sudden, there's an emotion in this ball game. There's been a little talking going on, a little body going on. A little bit of everything going on. Smith lost the dribble when he tried to make the catch, and now Rozier. James Brewer. Is he inside, outside? Can't get it down. Well, I tell you what, they are battling on the boards. There's a whistle blowing, and I think the officials very quickly want to control some of that. That's Kasurin's second foul. It's been a little bit emotional. This has had the championship game emotion. You know, I, I thought right off the bat, both teams, and then they hit a little dry spell for about two minutes, and it's back to the high intensity. Morton fouled when he shot a three. That was not a good foul right there. You know what happens on that? Teams, especially in the Metro, you know what Denny Crum is going to do sometimes on the out-of-bounds. They run that play with a little picket fence, like in Hoosiers, right? At the top of the key. And that Morton steps back, and you're so frustrated as a player because you know it's coming, but you can't get through the screens. They've got guys like Troy Smith and Rozier up there, and uh, they just get frustrated and push Morton that time. Liam Morton not only leading the Metro, but he's also leading the country in three-point percentage. But also you look down Brower, Harris, and some guys who can hit the long-range three-pointers today. Well, I'll tell you what, talk about shooting 54% from three-point range. I I'm going to guess the national average is somewhere between 35 and 40, maybe 37, somewhere there. If that, yeah, yeah. right in that area, 30-something, mid-30s. Say 54 from three-point range. That's Terry Gannon territory. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> He's a little higher up when he lets it go, though. Yeah, he is. See many guys that size shooting it. 6'6". Six, six. A little problem at the free throw line. Cardinals still down three, and the Rams with the ball. Kenny Harris. 9-10 left in our first half. 21-18, Virginia Common left. Pretty good in the half court, too, aren't they? Mills couldn't bury that shot. 
Now Miner. Morton's open. Here's your man. Number one three-point shooter in the country, percentage-wise, and Morton buries it. No one recognized that he was open on the wing, and no one got a hand up. Back in the tie at 21. And this is what Louisville wants, Fred, is the ball out of the hands of Kenny Harris. And look at James Brewer, top of your screen, face guarding Kenny Harris. He doesn't care where the ball is, where anybody else is. He wants to keep it out of Harris' hands, and he lost him there. And bad things happen. After right back to Sherron Mills, and he's fouled. Ryan oh, Hopkins got it. Brewer had him, too, and the ball got loose, and he went and played the ball instead of staying with Kenny Harris. Harris had the ball, and bad things happened for Louisville when Kenny handles it. We look at the open jump shot by Dwayne Morton. Finally, someone gets there, but it's way too late. He's going to be in his space before he goes up with it. Yeah, he got a good look at it, didn't he? Ron Mills with four. Now make it five points today. Scored 37 points and had 19 rebounds in two games in this tournament. A 6'9 senior from Snow Hill, Maryland. Excellent, excellent player. He's a good passer on top of everything. He can do a lot of things. A great passer in the high post and really important in their offense. This game, even though the intensity is there, it hasn't gone up and down as of late. And then the open jump shot, excuse me, Freddie, open layups that we had earlier in the game. Well, that was almost a great save. Kenny Harris is going to let it go out of bounds, and James Brewer got after it. And almost made a save, but he got the back of the apparatus with it. Tell you what, there's a guy that plays with some fire. Watch this. Shot by Miner goes up. And actually may have hit the line anyway. Now nah, he's out of bounds anyway, Fred. Yeah. Now the full court pressure. You see Brewer there with Kenny Harris. I'm going to leave him now. <laughs> no, get it a minute ago. Now you're mine. I'm going to stay right with you. Look at the pick. Ashby had a screen set. Brewer got by it. Then he got a challenge right there. He got a hand on that. Yeah, that was great defense. Recovery, and here go the Cardinals. Miner to the other end. Got it. The charge on Miner, but he got the bucket. Kenny Harris stepping in, and there. Here come the cards, right in your living room. Straight down Broadway, and Miner's going to drive to the bucket. We'll see Kenny Harris step in. No doubt that he's there, but the ball left his hand before he knocked into Kenny Harris. So a good call by Jerry Donahue. And Miner, or Morton, will make, get some work, bring the basketball up. Tell you what, Morton 6'6", six, six, really athletic. He can move his feet, he's quick. Now Brewer and Harris match up again. Oh, uh, Ashby threw it to the scorer's table. Fifth turnover charge to VCU. Unlikely match up in the Big 8. Kansas State, Missouri, who would have thunk it, huh? Yeah. Yogi used to say. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. 23-23 <laughs> tie here. This is kind of a textbook matchup. These are the two teams you would have figured would be here, and they are. Now, Tulane, the second seed, but really not playing that well at the end of the year. These two teams playing the best basketball of anybody in the Metro the last couple of weeks. Gibson guarding Morton, giving up three inches. Boy, he's a tough matchup for anybody. They're taking down inside to Greg Miner, another tough matchup, and he has six. And how many times have you seen Cardinal guards get that little lob behind? And they do it year in, year out. Right. That's two. It fell, and it was going to be two anyway. There's going to be a goal ten. Rodney Ashby gets his first basket of the game. The Louisville offense, they always have sent their guards down low. And now if the high post cut, so important if you're a defender, McCoy, to see that screen coming and not let that player get to the block. They've always had those big guards that they can take advantage of. Haven't they? Harris for three. Kenny Harris with five points. You know, important today for VCU to dictate tempo, but that doesn't mean slow. It means play at their own tempo. When they have it, they're going to run, Fred. They're not going to back off. They that Louisville thing one step further. They've always had big guards who can jump. Yes, they have. I remember one time a player from Iowa said about Daryl Griffith, I've guarded a lot of guys who can jump, but all the others came down. <laughs> he doesn't seem to do that. <laughs> Dwayne Morton with his eighth point of the first half. 
quiet last night with 10, but he's off to a good start today. I haven't heard from McCoy as of late. He got to go in the hurry. He had 10 points early in four and a half minutes. That shot's off. Talk again. Look at Morton. Talk about Sky. He didn't come down for a while either. No. Oh, nice pass inside to Smith with a ah. move. Brian Hopgood's there. First two for Brian Hopgood. First two points off the bench for the Cardinals. Bench has been getting him 22 a game this year. Look at Harris. And a foul is called. Well, Kenny Harris just pushes the ball up the floor. At the other end of Louisville with Dwayne Morton. He does get up a little bit, huh, Fred, oh, on his jump shot? I and mean, there's no way that you're going to stop that, especially if you're trying to guard him with a Tyrone McCoy or somebody of his own size. Sure, he's so athletic. He's quick. Yeah. Not only quick on the floor, gets up and down real quick. He's got quick, quick leaps. Harris misses the free throw. You see, he leads the league in assists. Six assists a game. Averages 11 points. Been scoring more than that of late. He had a game against Virginia Tech. He had 14 assists and no turnovers. Actually, he had two games in a row where he didn't get the basketball over. Here you go from the outside again. There's James Brewer, and he becomes the seventh Cardinal to score today. Six different BCU players to score. There's Brewer lighting that emotional fire again. See what Denny Crum just did? Denny Crum pumping his fist as Brewer again lights the emotional fire in Freedom Hall. Have a little early lunch, Terrence. <laughs> I tell you what, a little pump fake next time. He might be over there on the bench next to Denny Crum after he flies by. Offensive rebounds going to Louisville and obviously the second chance points as well. Their defense has been terrific too. And VCU just has some scores. That's why they have 29 points. But the man-to-man -man has been awfully tough, making things difficult. We say they're having a hard time running their offense right now. Now we've got a whistle low. Brian Hopgood and Ashby tangled down there. And Hopgood being talked to. Danny Hooker blew the whistle, stopped the game, did not call the foul. Which I like. I mean, they, piece of yeah. Who are you going to call a foul on? They're both hitting each other, banging each other. It's a championship game. You got bands playing, cheerleaders flying, and don't blow the whistle, call a foul. Just talk to them a little bit. Say, settle down, guys. Gibson with a floater that won't go. Saved by Kenny Harris. Off the down inside, and Mills couldn't pick it up. Pass just a little bit low off the bounce. Tough for a sixth six ram turnover. 6'10 guy to go that low to get the pass. Even on the turnovers, which VCU has to like. They're not turning it over against the press. Now they got Ashby on a foul. And Hopgood applauded <laughs> Hop the call. Sure. They've been tangling down in there pretty good. They just got talked to. And then, you know, when they talk to you, you better leave it alone for a minute because they're going to blow the whistle if you don't. Oh, yeah. But you know Rodney's saying, well, you talk to him at the other end. Now you call it on me at my end. They're dueling in Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Missouri's taking the lead now at halftime over Kansas State by two. Norm Stewart's Missouri team lost seven in a row, won the last game of the regular season, and now they're halfway to winning the championship and going to the NCAA tournament. Greg Miner. That's a tray. Miner has nine. At 18 last night. Dangerous part of the ball game right now for VCU. And Denny Crum upset because they haven't, the haven't recorded the three right now. It's actually 34 to 29. Got a five-point lead Louisville, and now they change the board. Oh, Kenny Harris had the answer. Big second shot. Trick. Big shot, Fred. I mean, there's a guy. You go down five for the first time, he comes right back to pull you in two. 332 left in the first half. Rozier operating at the baseline. Gibson knocked it loose for a moment, his double team, and tried to get the shot and was walking. Seventh turnover, Louisville. We have time out here. 325 left in first half action. We've got a ball game. 34-32 Louisville at the break. Boy, and Keith McGree brings it right back for Louisville. Through the foul. 
And Green just kept going until he got there. Pulled the defense to him and drew the foul. And you talk about the NCAA tournament and Keith Legree, a guy who will have to have a big tournament if Louisville is going to make some noise. I think they've got everything coming together. Got an inside game, have an outside game. Guys who can shoot the three. They've played a tough schedule. You know, it's a Denny Crum club that gets ready to play for March. This guy right here has to just play solid. Nothing spectacular. He's got to handle the basketball well and, and make the right decisions. And if, if he does, I think he's a team that could make some noise. You, you have to you think like his makeup. He plays professional baseball in the summertime. He's played two seasons now of professional baseball. See, I think you'd have to think that he's got good boys. Seventh turnover VCU, and Troy Smith takes advantage at the other end. Eight points, Troy Smith, more than he scored in last night's game. And that's one of those decisions we just talked about. The little fish by Legree. Rams in danger now of coming unraveled. They are down by six. Biggest lead for Louisville. You know what, Fred? And if Sonny Smith didn't have to take that other time out, I wouldn't mind calling one right yeah, here. Right now. And just stop the crowd, stop this run. But he can't because he already wasted one on the out-of-bounds. Didn't get the ball inbounds. Had to call one. Now 2.35 left in the half. And if Louisville hits him with a run, they could really have him hurting at halftime. Rams are going to have to find a way. Brewer. Trying to find a way for Louisville is fouled. Tell you what, James Brewer can create some things and does. Terrence Gibson draws his first foul. Well, you have to guard him in the three-point area as well. That's the steal. No one let Kenny Harris know that there was any player behind him. You got to talk to your point guard in that spot. And Troy Smith, the finish on the break and a good decision by Legree. And it, again, you know, those type decisions, what we're talking about. He didn't have to score big. He started the year not shooting very well, and I think it kind of affected him throughout the middle part of the season. James Brewer has four. 220 left in first half action. And the Cardinal lead has gone to eight. And this is a big possession here for VCU. And Harris hit the big shot a moment ago when it went to five, and now it's at eight. Oh, great back door. And a foul called on it as Gibson went to the basket. Right, this is how you draw it up, too, Fred. When, when the def defensive players, look at Brewer on the top. He's denying that pass. You go to the high post, the back door, and you get the open layup or you get the foul. The post back door is a way to beat the overplay, and you can't do it any better than that. What did say a moment ago about Sharon Mills? Good passer from the high post. You see that one? Yeah, not bad. Made huh? the pass with his back to the basket. Looks like Tom Bornwinkle. You remember him? <laughs> I know I'm dating myself now. But... <laughs> Terrence Gibson at the line. First time today at the free throw line. Sixty-six percent shooter couldn't get that one. Six-three junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Keenan High School and an Imperial Valley Junior College. And both teams four points now. For Terrence Gibson, and from here on out in the first half, both teams will shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not sure if I like this little pressure off the free throw here from Sonny Smith. You don't want Louisville to go up and down. Well, they just did. Missed the shot and got the tip from Rosier. See, I'll tell you, Fred, Sonny does that a lot, and you know when you have a team that does that, you stay with it. But this little run by Louisville, I mean, you don't want them to get any easy shots or to get that crowd back into it. If they score in the half court, the crowd noise is one thing. If they get a dunk at the other end off the break, this place gets nuts. And they rough. 143 left in the half now. Nine-point lead. And Sharon Mills with a tough fadeaway shot. He's taking difficult shots now and not getting them down. Troy Smith. Uh -oh. There they go. Foul is on Rodney Ashby as fourth. Well, Ashby saved the bucket. He took Morton down, and Morton was like Walter Payton after that. He jumped right back up. Didn't want to let Ashby know that he had gotten him. Morton takes it straight to the hole, and Ashby comes in. That's a clean play, and he's not trying to hurt him there or anything. He goes for the ball and actually had the ball. He got up pretty well. Rodney was up that time, but uh, got him with the body. Now he's out of the game with his fourth foul here in the first half. Uh, Wayne Morton on the line. This could be a double-digit lead now. Yeah. And it all happened within about a two-minute period. Morton with eight today. See his numbers for the year. 
three-point shooter, the best in the country. One for three at the free throw line. Got fouled shooting a three early. That one falls for him in double digits. Ten-point lead. Sonny Smith's club is right there until about two minutes ago. And that's how Louisville wins in this building. Ten for Dwayne Morton now. An 11-point lead, Louisville. And this guy has really not touched the ball lately. He's not run the show. Now, when's the last time we saw him pull this out and go ahead and clear for himself? Not about eight or eight minutes or so. Gibson gets a screen from McCoy, but jump check right there by Troy Smith and the switch. Smith having trouble staying with him. Now they got Kareem Washington. I tell you what, they ran their stuff pretty good right there. Oh, and they needed to. Weak side, and it opened it up. Yeah. The key is hitting the shot, though, too, after you run that. And they haven't been able to do that in the last few minutes. Troy Smith lost a handle on it. Lloyd Rozier almost made a great save down there, and it's out of bounds. It will be Louisville basketball. I think Rozier has good hands. He went up and got that thing behind him on his fingertips and almost caught it. His one hand, about three a mile. Bob to Morton. Oh, that's too easy. Dwayne Morton having a good first half. Where they thought right there on the inbounds play. Sonny BC, Smith can't like it. BCU needs to get to the locker room play. Yeah, they do. And they regroup a little bit. Sonny's going to let him take the last shot. 37 seconds left in the half. They are down 11. He'd just like to see single digits when he gets to that locker room now. Kenny Harris holding. Louisville letting him. And good move by Denny Crum. Yeah. He's, he's going to the zone. He's not going to let Kenny Harris clear out and run that 1-4 where he penetrates and usually scores at the end of the half. He changes the defense. You can shoot it from 20 feet if you want to, but not from the lane. That's right. There's your clock. Gibson, oh, almost surprised Mills. They have to shoot it. Three on the shot clock, and Kenny Harris gets it up with one second on the shot clock. That's not the halftime. The teams are going. The half's not over. That's the shot clock, not <laughs> that the, game the part. part. <laughs> they, uh, they thought that that was the end of the half. It was actually the, the horn from the shot clock. <laughs> then he looked like he did the last time these two teams played in VCU. They had a little yeah. squabble with the clock. VCU should have had maybe a second or two left to win the game. And their officials said the game was over. Then he was out there just grabbing every player he could and rushing them to the locker room. What was that called in the old CB days? We gone. <laughs> <laughs> Long throw to Rozier. He got the shot away. Oh. And didn't quite get it down. Well, that would have been a heck of a play to finish a half run, and they almost pulled it off. And the crowd liking what he sees so far. We've arrived at halftime at Freedom Hall in Louisville in the Metro Conference Tournament Championship game. And Louisville has this man's club, Sonny Smith's Virginia Commonwealth team, down by 11. It is 46-35 Cardinals at halftime here. Let's get upstairs now to Jim Brinson. We are back in Freedom Hall at halftime. And Again, Louisville leading Virginia Commonwealth 46-35. Got away from them in the last three, three and a half minutes. And again, it was that Cardinal defense that led them to the lead. Now let's take a look at today's Gillette halftime stats. Now, well, Fred, VCU shooting 48%, but most of that came early when they got easy shots. Much tougher down the stretch in the first half to get a good shot. And uh, the rebounds... Louisville getting a lot of offensive rebounds and putbacks. Troy Smith, especially in the middle. Turnover's not really a factor. BCU handled the basketball well, but look at the second chance points, 13 to 2. Individual scoring. McCoy got 10, and as Terry mentioned, he got him in the first four minutes and 15 seconds, and the Cardinals shut him down. Harris, 9, Mills, 6. Sharon Mills has but one rebound at halftime. Morton with 12, Miner with 9, Smith 8, Rosier 6. Great balance, and Rosier leading everybody today with six rebounds. There is your Gillette. Halftime stats. Just a point. Louisville has allowed only five opponents to shoot 50% this year. They've done it 13 times. And they're on target to make that 14 and keep another opponent under 50. Well, we saw Morton with the 12 points, but more impressively, I think, he was on Tyrone McCoy. He just shut him out after the first four minutes. The man-to-man -man defense by Louisville, that's what really got them to lead. Agree to minor. Morton looking inside to Troy Smith. Now the Greek gets it to him and inside out again. Miner's going to spot up and shoot it. That's three. Hey, how nice is that? You know, we, we heard Jim Brinson from the huddle quote Denny Crump saying the inside-outside game. That's what's going to win it, and that's exactly what they did that time. Great ball movement. Now the Cardinals up by 14. Now let's watch VCU's offense, Terry. 
I mentioned shooting 48%, but they're having to work to get every shot. And at some point, that takes its toll on you, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think over the course of a game that you can shoot 50% against a defense like this because everything's hard. You've got to get some easy buckets. And they pushed it up early, but that's a catch-22. You don't want to make this game a 94-foot game. You were a shooter and a good one, and it just kind of works on you mentally after a while, doesn't it? And you get frustrated, too, when you can't get the shot and you rush it when you get it. And I think that shot was right. Yep, that's exactly what you're talking about right there. Now they got a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to BCU. You know, you can't make the easy pass when you can't get an easy open jump shot. And it's been a while since you got that shot. Then you finally get it, and you hurry up. You want to get rid of it right away. BCU wanting to win this game to assure themselves of being in the NCAA tournament. They're 20 and 8 coming in. Terry, if they can't win it, they want to come back and at least make it close and get that committee up there or something like that. That's a good point. They, if they don't want to get blown out here and put some doubt in the committee's mind, I think they should be in getting the championship game, but you just never know what they're going to do. Well, they went to war on the boards because Surin couldn't get a tip. Sharon Mills is fouled. He's going to have to come up big here in the second half for him, and that was a pretty big play right there. Only a second rebound of the game, though, and that's really surprising for Mills. Troy Smith, I think, has played a good ball game so far. First foul on Troy Smith. Better point about the shots. Sean Mills didn't shoot it well in the first half. He didn't get any easy shot. He shot a lot of long fadeaways. You know what I do if I was Sonny Smith? And I'm not coaching his team, but you know, use Kenny Harris even more in the second half on the clear out, the 1-4 the where he controls it, or use Kenny Harris on the same side of the floor as Mills. Because the number of times the ball has gone inside the Mills, he's had to kick it back out. It hasn't been a shooter with him on that side. Good point. Morton, long bounce pass to Keith Legree. Brings it up on the wing. Back to Legree and down the bucket. He comes to Smith. Good dish. Good dish. Troy Smith has 10. And that's all Keith Legree has to do for this club. Don't worry about scoring. Just handle the basketball and create some offense sometimes for your teammates. Biggest lead of the day for Louisville at 15 now. The defense just isn't letting BCU find good shots, easy shots. Look where the offense is. You know, you're 30 feet from the basket. Not even a threat to score at that point. Trying to find a back door and couldn't. They get it to Mills, though, on the dish down the lane in a nice little reverse layup. Set play from the sideline. Sonny Smith able to direct his offense with the offense in front of him. Some coaches like the defense in the second half in front of him. Sonny likes his offense. There's a high post Fred with Rozier, and he's so tough. Not his play, though. He's not going to go all the way from the top of the key and be able to drive to the basket. He's going to be helped down there, but he passes well out of that spot. Didn't happen that time. Second foul on Rozier. Okay, now VCU's made a stop. They could get it down to 11, maybe 10 here. They're not playing with much, much emotion. They seem like they need to catch a little fire here. I'm not sure they know how to attack that defense. I mean, it's they're not sure what they want to do against. They had a bucket a moment ago getting it to Mills. Again, I, I think you use Mills, you use Harris, anybody else in a second there. Running Carolina runs that same offense where they put the four across the lane. One four, McCoy with the three that won't fall. Sharon Mills with the stuff. Maybe there's the emotional fire they need. It usually happens with the heels, too. Mills a big rebound. His third down, he's got two in the last 30 seconds. It's a foul on Kenny Harris. His first. Wanted to make something happen right there. So you don't mind that foul if you're Sonny Smith. You're trying to, as you say, make something happen. Trying to get a strip, get a steal, get some kind of momentum. How does North Carolina run that little one four that yeah. they're in right now? The object is kicked to one of the inside men and try to get a back door from the wing. The object there is to get the ball to Wayne Morton and let him shoot a three. Well, as I said, it worked, it worked in the movie Hoosiers and it works here at Freedom Hall. The old little picket fence. Morton with a foul. Just his second. He has 15 points today. Now, how many times have we seen Denny Crumb's clubs do that? What's the line right here? You just step together. Nobody can get through for it. And then if you're out there first, he just goes around you to the hoop. Then you have a disadvantage numbers-wise. And the way Denny Crumb has run that for so long, if you have a shooter there, you can't stop that. Dallas Cowboys did a nice job of protecting Troy Aikman like that. <laughs> 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 
He had a good day, too, didn't he? VCU kind of feeling like the Bills at this point. Oh, boy. Louisville beat them twice, and they were tough ball games during the regular season. One of them went to overtime, 90-88 Louisville in that one. Oh, look at the defense. I mean, every shot is contested. Every pass is contested. You can't reverse the basketball. Hop good with a takeaway. Morton outside to Miner to Legree. And good patience. They bring it back out. Legree will run the show. Smaller lineup in for Denny Crum right now. There's zero out. And Hop good, the only big guy in there. Off target that time, Kasurin with the rebound. Harris, three won't fall. He's trying to find a spark for his ball club and can't get the shot to drop right now. And we have not seen Sean Mills get the ball on the break one time today. He usually is up ahead and they get the basketball to him for at least two, three buckets a game. Yes, not to make an excuse for him, they've really been bothered by the flu. I wonder how much of that has carried over maybe now playing their third game in three days. I didn't think at the end of the first half that they were tired, but they kind of look tired right now, don't they? Well, they do right now. Louisville, obviously, with the bye, he just has to play two games in two days. Hopgood with a stick back. Got the tip. Four points by Hopgood. And the Cardinals are up by 16. Biggest lead of the day. They keep stretching the lead. Derwin Webb on Sharon Mills. Now is the time to get Mills the basketball. And there he is on the block. Yeah, there it is. Good decision by Kenny Harris. You know, he recognized Derwin Webb was guarding it. 13 for Sharon Mills now. Big Miner really wanted the ball to the wing that time. He looked like you in the national championship game when Lorenzo Charles got the stuff. <laughs> Same result. He didn't get it either. Same wing, wasn't it? Yes. Right side. Look great. Now, Tom, I'm not sure defensively and offensively that Louisville can play much better than they are right now. I just running their stuff side to side. They don't have Rozier in there. Hey, I should explain myself. When Derek Wittenberg launched a shot that didn't get there and Lorenzo Charles stepped it to win the national championship for NC State, Terry Gannon was wide open on the wing asking for the ball. I could have been a hero. <laughs> 13-37 left in this one. The Cardinals are up by 16. Back after this from Butt Drive. Pizza Hut delivery of the game. Miner just delivered another one. Greg Miner now with 14 points. And the Cardinals up by 18. And too many deliveries for VCU today. From the Cardinals. Oh, there's one. McCoy's first bucket since the 4.15 mark of the first half. He now has a dozen points. It's that high post to that 1-4, and they get the back door. It's the second time today they've gotten a backdoor basket off. Raycom is pleased to welcome our viewers tuning in on Prime Network and the nationwide family of regional sports cable affiliates. Look at the second half shooting. Louisville, 6-3. Hop good with a miss inside that time. Kenny Harris. But good defense, too. Recognizing Brower in the corner. And Kenny Harris able to get that bucket because Keith Legree was so conscious of Brower being open on the wing, Fred. And Sharon Mills standing in the lane, setting a screen for him. He came up and took advantage of it. And James Brewer set to come back in for Louisville. He's really been lighting fires under the Cardinals in this tournament. Morton spots up. Got it. It's a two. 17 points, Dwayne Morton. 16-point lead, Louisville. Say it again, the Rams, if not playing to win, are going to have to play to get back closer in this thing. This is the high post, 1-4. Look for the back door first. Kenny Harris off the screen. He'll go one-on-one. -on -one. Nice move. Good, good move getting him the basketball. It's that little screen they set for him on the perimeter. Well, one 4 has been pretty nice to him right now. Yeah, it has. Still a 14-point deficit. It's the defensive end that's hurting them now. They just can't stop Louisville. He's really in sync offensively. And they go back to their old UCLA high post offense. Try to free up the guard coming off the screen. Post the guard up. Time to get Miner the 
ball, too. With Lauer trying to guard him down low. There he is. Oh, I mentioned, too, BCU trying to come back. Tough to do against a good defensive team. Yeah, it is. You just, even if you make the stops, nothing's easy at the other end. And you can't score in bunches. Good defensive team is being very patient at the offensive end right now and chewing up some clock on each position. Now BCU gets the stop, and back they come, down by 14. Mills is up there, but Harris thought it was a risky pass, didn't take the risk, and now he's fouled. Kenny Harris just doing a little leadership, barking at one of his teammates there. 11.03 left in this one, and we're back after this from Shen Fraser. Being brought to you by the Kubota Tractor Corporation. Louisville up by 14, 11.03 to play, and let's find Jim Brinson. All right, thank you very much, Fred. Sonny Smith in the huddle instructed his guards to take the ball to the basket. They want to try to create contact and then go to the free throw line and score with the clock stopped. That's how they feel that they can get back into this game. Louisville's committed four fouls in the second half. VCU but one. Well, not a bad strategy, especially when you have Kenny Harris handling the ball. Uh, right now, Chris Brower in the game, not really a penetrator. He's going to spot up on the wing. For a jump shot. So really, Harris is the only guy who has great driving ability. And they go back to the low set. Now Harris trying to position Brower on one wing, gets in the ball. 2-3 zone, and Brower, the guy who wants to get the seam spot up. He's got to move a little better, though. He's stationary. Now it's Harris. He's having some tough shooting luck. Mills can't get the tip. Kasurin has a rebound, and he's fouled. Troy Smith had a hand on him down there. Second on Troy Smith. 10.35 left in this game. Hey, Louisville's sort of calmed down a little bit now. Maybe the door's open a bit. I'm just going to say, a little bit of a lull in yeah. Freedom Hall. With the crowd and with Louisville. No, but it's it's a 14-point game, so they'll trade baskets. Brewer, Green Washington, now Kenny Harris. Even if VCU scores, it's taken some time to do it. Louisville in the zone. Brower's got to get up a little higher and make Morton come up and play, or, or at least make them make a decision. You're playing with Brewer or Morton. He's too flat over here. There he is, right in that seat. With quick ball movement, they find Kareem Washington, and he couldn't knock it down. And it's out of bounds. It'll be VCU basketball. They can't seem to back that zone in. They can't get enough pressure on it to kind of buckle it and... Move it back into the lane. That wasn't a bad job, though. They just, yeah, it was a bad shot. He just didn't, he barely hit the rim with that shot. Quick ball movement to yeah. get the shot. Is there up by three on the second half? Yeah. Well, what does that do to the big eight? Is there anything in Seven bits and Missouri wins that thing? They were figuring on six without Missouri being in the picture. 64%. Actually, cooling off. They were at 75 a moment ago. And Brower misses one. Brewer, he's the guy that lights the fire. Did that last night. Night in, night out. I mean, this guy has been great off the bench for Danny Crum all year long. Six for James Brewer. Back to the man to man. And they'll go to their high post, which has been good to them. Earlier, we're talking about how mentally tough it is when you can't get good shots. Now you work for 30 seconds, can't stick a shot, and he come right down to score at the other end. That really is one that works on your head. Brower for three. It won't drop. Mm. Rams can't buy one right now. Brewer right back. Foul. By Brewer. Well, he makes things happen. You know, when you got a guy coming off the bench, you see Brower missing the three, and that starts the break. The long rebound, the guards get the basketball, and Brewer takes it right up, stops at the free throw line, and hits the nice, easy jump shot. You want a guy coming off your bench to do a couple of things. But number one, he may change the style that you're playing. You want to bring in a big guy, fine, a small guy, but you want him to pick up the tempo and change the game in some way, or slow the tempo when he's a big guy. Brewer does that. He'll take the shot, he'll go up and down the court, and he changes things for Denny Crump. Seam coming up court looking, got a really, got a good look at the floor and then made a good decision. 87% free throw shooter. Two for three now after that miss. You know, most people sitting at home watching games, if you're not a fan of a team, they cheer for the underdog. Right now, Perry Clark saying, I'm cheering for every favorite in the world to yeah. win today. Yeah, he is. Elaine losing in the first round of this tournament. Came in ranked 23rd in the country. Virginia Tech pulled against that. Now they take it inside to Mills. He scores and he's fouled. 
And the bench for VCU and the crowd gets up a little bit. First time they've been up and cheering. Rozier's third foul. 9.05 to play. Still time for the Rams to make a run. Kevin really needed quick in the second half. Now, Sonny Smith deserved coach of the year this year, but that man, Denny Crum, you know, he's, he's overlooked so often. He's won 11 regular season Metros. Came to name coach of the year in the Metro three times. I mean, expectations are so high, it's almost impossible for him to ever win the coach of the year. Well, it's tough when they take winning for granted, isn't it? Yep. Brewer again with the dish down inside. The ball lost for a moment. Smith able to get it back. Still battling with it. And now at last, a foul is going to be called. Jerry <laughs> Donnie pointed at Kasur and he said, who, me? His third. He had about four arms that time. He grabbed about four different limbs as they were scrambling through. I'll watch Kasur come from the middle. He pushes Cliff there, and he ends up in the cheap seats. Better foul down in the lane. Eugene Kasurin from St. Petersburg, Russia, but I think the first two words that most foreign basketball players learn in English are, who me? <laughs> Next year, I didn't touch him. They use it often. Uh-oh. That's three. 20 for Dwayne Morton. I could have told you that was going on. How do you let him catch the ball wide open behind the three-point line? Leading three-point shooter in the country. That's his third trade today, shooting 54% in three-point range for the year. Ron Mills right back inside. Count the bucket. Now he's coming to life. 11 second half points, 17 in the game. Well, the guys born in America say who me too. All of them say the same. Yeah. I tell you, and watch this. Kenny Harris, top of your screen. You have to guard him. There's that alignment. You've got Harris on the same side as Mills. You can't really guard them both. You can't double down into Mills and help out because Harris will hit the three. Not Mills. You saw him signal basket good after he made the shot. Now he completes the three-point play. Still a 15-point lead for Louisville, and they're having trouble getting it inbounds. Well, pressure here. Uh oh, now they've got it broken, and Morton. A little stop and go. Kick back to Brewer. Three. Uh-oh again. <laughs> hey, you just can't do it. I mean, you're down 15 at that point with eight minutes left. You want to pick up the pressure and create some things. And they just make you pay. Back to the 18-point lead. Back-to-back -back threes from Morton and Brewer. Harris long with a try for a three. And he hasn't gotten a shot lately, and that's exactly what we talked about. You rush it a bit when you haven't shot. This guy doesn't rush it, though. Huh. Well, we'll miss that time. Boy, the crowd was starting to rise in anticipation. Harris. Oh, three won't go. And now the Rams just kind of firing from long range and not much happening with it. Uh-oh, they got Rozier. That's a foul. Flying out of bounds. Kareem Washington. Oh, it's Terrence Gibson, excuse me. Fans in Freedom Hall love it. 71 to 53, and they show the Cardinals their appreciation. Right now, this thing could get a little bit ugly as VCU starting to turn it over, kick up bad shots to pass up to Rozier and, and make sure they didn't make the layup. Well, you never know what he pulled some, some odd looking shots out of his back pocket. VCU 20 and 8. The question you have to ask yourself is are they in the tournament or not? If they are really borderline, a blowout's got to hurt them this afternoon. Yeah, you're right. They have to be careful and stay, uh, stay close in this ballgame, and it's going away from something. 7.32 left in the game. Back after this from the local station. This is the Lacom Sports Network. They dunk from three point range, and when they shoot the threes, can't guard them, Fred. Good shooting club. 7.32 left in this contest. Louisville has opened up the biggest lead of the day at 19. VCU perhaps fighting for a tournament berth, needing to fight their way back in it. Maybe they're in. Shooting 50%. Look at the club they have on the floor right now. I mean, Morton, Miner, Brewer can all stick the three. Then you got Rozier inside. That's a tough club to defend. 
Fade away, Sharon Mills. That's a shot he's had trouble hitting today, and Kasurin gets the tip in. Four points, Eugene Kasurin. The problem right now is you can't pressure Louisville, though. I mean, they've just made you pay twice when you tried to go to the, the full court press after a bucket. You gotta stay with the, the straight man to man defense. Watch this, Morton flashing inside. Oh, he's quick. Minor, he's picked up the dribble though, and now Morton spots up on the way. McCoy comes out to cover. Down inside, hot good. With the fake, shot won't go. Rebounded Sharon Mills. He really is coming life. Eight rebounds now, seven of them in the second half. Down inside, they go to Mills. Knocked out of there by Brian Hopgood. Picked up Brewer. Cardinals on the break. Taken away. Nope. Now we go the other way. Three on one. Good decision. Good decision to go left to Mills when he had Miner there, the three on one. But now, see, there's no pressure up here in the backcourt. 20 points, Sharon Mills, 14 of them in the second half. Still the 15 point lead to the Cardinals, 6 05 to play. Sonny tried to go to that press. It doesn't work. Three substitutions now for Louisville. Derwin Webb, Keith Legree, and Troy Smith all coming back in. Kentucky holding off LSU in the second half. Down the road in Lexington in the Southeast Conference Tournament Championship game. I'll draw some boos here. Read them all. Yeah. Big East. Read the big, read the big sigh of relief today. Right. Seton Hall the took big, Syracuse the out. Big sigh today. Well, I tell you, if they'd have won that tournament, well, the Big East down anywhere this year. Happened in the Metro one year. Yes, it did. And, uh, and the ACC had it happen the next year with Maryland. They did not let them play in the tournament. McGree with a miss. The ball out of bounds. ECU basketball. Rams down 15. 5.36 to play. Trying to find a way to make a little run here. But he Crum obviously did not like the call. We talked about it yesterday. This is a league that has great cooperation between the officials and the coaches. I just don't see much arguing going on in this conference. Good officiating, the coaches appreciate it. Good coaching, the officials appreciate it. That's almost sickening, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Throw off a little fight, was <laughs> well. Eugene Kasurin's fourth foul. You know, what Sonny did this year, and the reason he won Metro Coach of the Year, how'd you like to lose your star player, maybe the best player in the Metro, along with Cliff Rozier? Kendrick Lorne goes down. You figure, you know, it's done. You just try to pull it together, somehow save the ship from going down. You know, he's done more than that. He's 8-2 and two since he went out of the lineup. And he, you shift your offense around, you adapt. He centered it around Kenny Harris, and that's why they're in this championship game and maybe are going to the NCAA tournament. He has a lot to do with that. Terry Donaghy led a march to the other end of the floor to throw it inbounds from... This end. And now, stepping on the out of bounds drive was Hopgood, and VCU gets it back. Yeah, and that's a small point, most fans would say, but a big point for Sonny Smith. They got the ball down under the basket and were able to trap in the corner. Tenth Cardinal turnover. We have time out here. 5.22 left in this one. The Cardinals up by 15. The Rams trying to rally. Going to happen? We'll find out. After this from Buck Drive. VCU has 5.22 to solve what has been a game-long problem. The Louisville defense. Cardinals lead by 15. Let's get to Jim Brinson. All right, thank you very much, guys. This is one of those unusual stories that you always seem to find at a conference tournament. This is Tony Taylor. In fact, I'll just let Tony describe what happened. Okay, basically, I've been a big Rams supporter for a very long time. And this year, I asked for my vacation. They wouldn't give me my vacation. So I had to be here with all these fans and support a team. I quit my job. By the way, guys, I will work for Final Four tickets. There you go, Tony Taylor. <laughs> he is, however, going back to school. He's going back to school to further his education and get a better job. Okay. Lost his job, lost his voice, but loves where he is today. Headline in the New York Times tomorrow, unemployment blamed on college basketball. <laughs> yeah. Solve that, Bill Clinton. <laughs> Uh, 22 points per game for the Louisville bench this year. Brewer, a big part of that. Today, doing the job. 14 to 4. VCU only getting a couple of buckets from their bench and some fouls early on. Rodney Ashby had four fouls in the first half. James Brewer 
He's averaging nine of those 22 points, has 10 here today. There's Wayne Morton back in. Erwin Webb out. Kassaran at the free throw line. 50% free throw shooter. Young man from St. Petersburg, Russia. 6'9", sophomore. 23-year-old sophomore. There are two Russians on this squad. Konstantin Pepele of the other, back home with the flu. ECU Rams really had a flu problem coming in here. Coach Sonny Smith had it. Sports Information Director Mark Halstead had it, and a number of the players. That's right, they'll be going back to that balmy weather. Yes. <laughs> On the East Coast. Virginia Tech still here. They can't get home. <laughs> 31 inches of snow in Blacksburg. Our producer, Tom Hewitt's wife, told him in Pittsburgh they have four feet of snow outside their door in a grip. Eugene Kasurin on the stick back. He has six points now. Now we get a little 13-point game here, and now finally the pressure comes up. See, this is what, oh, they get the turnover. No, I think Morton just made a bad decision. Hey, Rogier was not near the hoop that time, and Denny, not happy at all with that. <laughs> Denny Crum thinks the same way you do. Yes. <laughs> not a good decision. Harris, three won't go. They just haven't been able to knock that one down, but Gibson gets a two. And the bench is up, Fred. Sonny's up on the sideline. The fans are up. The guy with the beard's up. He may even go back to work. <laughs> it's back to an 11-point ball game. The Rams fighting back. Four minutes, eight seconds to play. And now VCU, after being down by 19, back within 11. Cardinals with eight tournament titles, three of the last five, working on their ninth today. They won their 11th regular season championship this year with an 11-1 conference mark. No run for the Rams. They brought it from 19 to within 11 and put a little emotion into it. It's a comeback team to Sonny Smith's club against South Florida this year. Down 26 with 10 minutes left to play. I mean, they were out of it. They were done. Kenny Harris goes on to score 30 points in the last 10 minutes and then the first minute of overtime, and they win the ball game. So I know that Sonny Smith and his bench right now over there don't think they're out of it. Morton made a better decision. Yeah. <laughs> and Morton thinks that... Uh, He'd rather shoot the basketball unless going to give it to Cliff. That's going to be a walk. Kenny Harris got it in the lane and got his feet tangled up with another players, and he tried to hand the ball to Mills. There was a walk called, and he didn't think so. Now it's a 13-point lead to Louisville again, and the Cardinals have the ball with 3.49 to play. Kenny Harris not able to dominate like he has in the last couple weeks today. Metro now wondering how many teams they'll get in. Tulane knocked out in the first round here. Deserving of a ball. Oh, look great. Now, what a shot by Keith Legree over to Sir. Not expecting Legree to take the shot. Normally, he'll dish it off. He goes past three Rams there. Comes up. I think he went up in the air wanting to dish it off. And when he couldn't find anybody open, at least no spacing where he could get him the basketball, he put it up through the foul and knocked it in. Eugene Kasurin is fouled out of the ball game. He will sit down with six points on the afternoon. And six rebounds. Tough time for Kasurin today. When you play against a Rozier, a Smith, a Morton in there, they're so athletic. And they give a lot of teams and big men problems inside. I have a question. All right. When you're from St. Petersburg, Russia, do you go home for spring break? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't have a country anymore. No. <laughs> when he left it, it was not Russia. I think I'd choose Myrtle Beach. Yep. Catch a few rays. 77-61, Louisville. 325 left. Ashby, nice. Little drop pass inside. And Ron Mills keeps that good second half going. Yep. Gibson. Oh, that had fallen. That could have been big. Well, the whole bench was in the air. Oh. <laughs> Sonny Smith and his assistant coach is really battling over on the sideline. There you see the pump fist from Sonny Smith. Boy, well, that goes. 12-point game, maybe an 11-point game. Need a little curl by Mills. And Brewer is caught on him. Rozier late getting over in the second time that we've seen him use that. Rim has a shield to go to the opposite side. Gibson. Oh, 
And you'll see the pressure after the made free throw. They come, I'm sure, in the last time out, talked about how he wants to break that press. Because Louisville struggled a bit against it in the last two minutes. Eight points, Terrence Gibson. Now the 12-point lead, Louisville. And they break the press. And they do it. Nice job, Fred, of having Rozier, the big man, be the guy who takes the inbounds pass in the corner. The trap doesn't bother him. It's too big. Now is going to use some pop. Three minutes left in the ballgame. 12-point ball lead, Louisville. Anything in single digits now for PC, you'd have to think, would be pretty good, Jerry. Yeah. And, uh, you say Louisville just content to run it down. They don't want it in there, even though they get bailed out with a foul. Sharon Mills caught him with a hand. I tell you what, that looked like a tired foul right there. It did. Uh, three games, three days. And you have the flu. Most of the team has a flu. It's Missouri <laughs> They're in it. wins the Big A championship. Norm Stewart, I'll tell you, you, he said to you a week ago that he thought he might be able to win that thing. It, they had lost seven straight, Terry. They were playing Colorado, the last place team. Missouri was seventh, and they said, if we beat Colorado, we'll win the tournament. I believe we can do that. You're the only other team to have ever done it from a number seven seed in the Big Eight. That's twice now they've been the seventh seed and won the tournament. Wow. Now, what does that do to the Big Eight? They were thinking they are going to get six teams in. Will they take the other six? Will they take seven from that way? What's you know, that going to do? Yeah, I Because who's out? Kansas State got to the championship game. They would have been the most likely out. I think they'd probably get seven. I think they almost have to. I think they got to give them seven, to be honest with you. Which doesn't help teams like Tulane and the guys wanting to get in. 13-point lead here, Louisville. 2.36 to play. That's one of those, you see that Missouri victory and coaches all over the nation moan and say, uh-oh, that hurts. <laughs> Dunk that time. Brewer with a nice easy layup. 12 points for James Brewer. That's a three. Terrence Gibson. And the VCU Rams finally were able to get a three-point shot down in a timeout here with 222 to play. They're going to close out the Metro Conference Tournament in 222 in Louisville. Cardinals lead by a dozen. There's the scene at Freedom Hall in Louisville. There's the situation. 80-68 Cardinals, 222 to play. The banners hanging from the rafters here at Freedom Hall, and there are a bunch of them. Then he crumbs two national championships, 1980 and 86. Only, only Dean Smith and Johnny Wooden have had more Final Four teams than Denny Crumb. He's been in six of them. And as I said, you know, for a number of reasons, I think Denny Crumb doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Number one, the sustained excellence over the period of time within the Metro Conference and nationally. But also, it's not a guy you see jumping up and down on the sidelines, not a high-profile guy over there on the side. He kind of does it the way his mentor did, Tom Wooden. He teaches and then lets them play when they get out there. Well, you know, and, and good players win basketball games, obviously, but when you do it over a 20-year stretch, your program That's right. is good. You know, next year, they say the recruiting class for Louisville coming in next year is going to make this team a Final Four team next year without a doubt. We got and it goes Zach Smith, an All-State player out of Illinois. We got a guy, Juan Week, who will handle the point guard duties while we keep the three. And then uh, there's Mills. It's an easy one. This is a bucket they've gotten in a while, too. They're just not getting as many of those. They open the game with those. Bozak Smith has already made the all-name team, hasn't he? Tell you what, if you like the 93 Cardinals, you're probably going to love the 94 mark. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 81-70, Louisville, a minute 41 to play. Cardinals have spread the floor. 25 on the shot clock. Now a foul. They're going to shoot two. Yeah, you look ahead to next year, and the, the one guy I didn't mention, Jason Osborne from Louisville Mail. They beat Ballard last night for the regional here in Louisville. He had 33 in overtime, and they say this guy is as good as they get. And he'll play right away here at Freedom Hall. So they, you know, you look at what they've done this year. Most of these players are really just in their second year of play on the college level. But then he comes, you bring in that young class, and you have a team of older guys with experience and youngsters with a lot of talent, and everyone's looking to next year here at Louisville. Going to have a nice blend of youth and experience. 13-point get lead now with a minute 32 to play. 
24 for Dwayne Morton. Another big day for him. Sonny Smith's cupboard isn't bare next year either. Now, you lose a Mills, but you got a Kendrick Warren back, a McCoy back, Gibson, Harris, all those guys. 26 points now for Sharon Mills. Kenny Harris having trouble shooting. I think we're seeing tired legs out there now. And there's a reach foul on Tyrone McCoy. VCU was spotting up trying to shoot threes coming down the stretch trying to get back in this thing and I think their legs were gone they just couldn't get them up there yeah they got some threes McCoy and Harris two guys you see in the picture both had some threes he, McCoy missed two in a row and he was short on both of them seen Kenny Harris miss short Kentucky all over LSU for the final so Dale Brown doesn't get in automatically no but uh, may still get in the tournament Miners free throw in and out in fact I think they are in I think LSU's got to go going to the championship yeah game. What the SEC needs to do, they start need, need to start winning some tournament games. They haven't had a lot of success in the NCAA tournament. This right. Now Rozier will go to the line. There's it. VCU had a chance now to get the ball right there and get it down to single digits. And they couldn't come away with it. Nashby has fouled out. Two points on the day for Rodney Ashby. Solid career at VCU. Guy off the bench every day in practice. And they, you know what you expect from him if you're Sonny Smith, and he, he gives you an all-out effort every time he's on the floor. Nice kid to be around, too. Hello, Cliff. Uh-oh. <laughs> you want to go hide somewhere. Look at the bench. They're, they're trying not to. <laughs> well, they're trying not to as soon as Denny looks the opposite way, and they let it loose. But VCU is going ahead and laughing. <laughs> Now there's some smiles on the Louisville bench, but now they quit smiling because then he turned around and started walking toward See? him. Look at him. <laughs> look at him. As soon as he turned around, look at Troy Smith. Smith. <laughs> now VCU can get it down to single digits. One minute left in the ball game and a near takeaway, but Sharon Mills saves it. Gets him for three. That's big. And that's going to get it down to eight. Yes, sir. You call the timeout. You're down to eight. You got 54 seconds left. Not over yet. 14 now for Terrence Gibson, 10 of them in the second half, now 54 seconds to play. It's an eight-point lead for Louisville. Well, VCU now has it down to single digits, 83-75, 54 seconds to play, and it looks like the Cardinals have wrapped up their Metro Tournament Championship. This will be their ninth Metro Tournament Championship. Their 12th time in the championship game, they won their 11th regular season championship this year, but VCU has come from 19 back to get it single digits. Yes, sir. A little trap here, and I'm sure Louisville in the huddle talked about getting the ball to a big guy in the corner if that's where it goes. Well, they don't get it to the corner, so Brewer handles it. And a foul. Stops the clock with 50.5 seconds to play. Yeah, nice job. They ran the baseline, and sometimes in timeouts, players forget that. But instead of going straight to the corner to Rozier, they ran the baseline and got it to Brewer. There's a rule I don't like. Now it's a two-shot foul. That's yeah. 10. I've, I've talked about it all year. I hate it. Hey, what does it do? It doesn't shorten the game at all. You, you still have to foul. And now you're just lengthening the game instead of shortening it. And it takes all of that pressure off the free throw shooter. Hey, what a game situation. You should have to earn the second shot. You should have to make the first to hit the second. 13 for Brewer off the bench today. Wouldn't mind the NBA rule where the clock stops in the last couple of minutes and you take it out. I agree. Ten point lead again. 49 seconds to play. Can't mess around here. You're going to get one up. Harris does for three. That time a little too strong. And a quick foul. Miner got the rebound. He's surrounded by black jerseys. Now Louisville has the lead back to double figures. Here's a guy who made a big transition this year, Greg Miner. Beginning of the year, went from the small forward spot to the two-guard spot. And uh, he's found a niche there. He's done a great job. And I think it, it makes Louisville so hard to guard. Because you don't match up with him. You know, here's a guy who plays like a forward, 6'6", six, six, and he's playing the uh, shooting guard role. There's Hopgood in, and Rozier leaving the floor. Seven points today for Rozier. Didn't really need the numbers from Cliff today. Had a solid game, but and the big second half last night. Denny Crum still doing teaching on the sideline, especially with Rozier. You'll see him talk to Rozier a lot when he goes to the bench. 
Six points, seven points rather, eight rebounds for Rozier. Now Miner gets the second free throw down, 11 point lead for Cardinals, 41 seconds to play. Mills gonna take the jump shot. Off target with it, slap up won't go. Flying in from the outside was Tyrone McCoy. He's called for the foul. Now the Rams going to have trouble keeping this thing in single digits. 30 seconds to play. 11 point lead to the Cardinals. Just got a call from the league office here, Fred. They asked if we'd pass it along to Louisville and ask them to keep this in single digits. Here. Yeah, this, <laughs> it looks better for the selection committee, doesn't it, though? All tournament team handed to us here. Clifford Rozier, Greg Miner, Tyrone McCoy, Kenny Harris, Dwayne Morton. Three from Louisville, two from VCU. Hard to argue with it. Not MVP, a bad, not a bad lineup. No. He's the MVP. Wayne Morton. Hard to argue with any of that, isn't it? We're not going to take issue with it. Now James Brewer walking off at Freedom Hall. Perhaps the last time and a standing ovation from Cardinal fans. And those aren't boos, those are brews. Those are brews, and he went out big today on his home court, I'll tell you that. 14 points off the bench for the Cardinals. Hopkin now sticks two of them. It's a 13-point deficit. A three-point shooter, Chris Brower, checks in. Kenny Harris is coming out of the game, getting a big pat on the back from Sonny Smith. They're going to let her roll to keep the clock from starting. Ooh, and they almost mishandled. And now, oh, a foul on a three-point shot. And I'll tell you, Dwayne Morton would like to go hide somewhere at this point. <laughs> Denny Crumb's not even going to comment on the sideline. He, I mean, he, all he did was stand there. There's nothing he could say that Morton does already know is going through his mind. McCoy will shoot three. First time at the line today, 63% free throw shooter. Still a 13 point lead. Well, you know, VCU really wanted to get this thing down into single digits, and they had it there. Another senior checking in, Mike Pace, a 6'7 senior from Pendleton, Indiana. Dwayne Morton will leave the floor. Standing ovation for Dwayne Morton and the MVP of this tournament. And I think maybe the best player in the conference the last quarter of the season, along with the guy like Kenny Harris. And, and this guy was just fantastic for him, inside, outside. He, he does a lot of things for Denny Crum. And there's Denny still teaching as he comes out. And I'm sure he's, he might mention that three-point foul down here. Now, Rich Mount in the game for VCU. And if that name sounds familiar, yes, it's his son. 12-point lead, Louisville. Son of Rick Mount. Have a in the end. We've got a foul call near midcourt. Stops the clock with 23.9 seconds to play. Alvin Mobley and Mike Harkin now check in for Virginia Commonwealth. Darren Gibson and Sharon Mills will leave the floor. Mills with 26 points today. Gibson with 14. Hug from his coach, but they're not done yet. They're, I think they do get a bit to the NCAA tournament. That's my opinion. I thought they had to win two games and get to the championship game. And uh, you know, for Sonny Smith, hopefully the selection committee feels the same way. I think the way they played down the stretch in the last month, you got to look at that and the record they posted. He's the green with 11 points. Greg Miner comes out. 15 for Miner today. Doug Calhoun is in. Brian Kaiser is in now. Tick Rogers on the line. Two points, Tick Rogers. 14 point lead, Louisville. 20 seconds to play. Target. Alvin Mobley fires down inside. Mount with a jump hook. Won't fall. Dad never shot that one, did he? Now Washington with a takeaway is going to shoot it from the circle and get it. Kareem Washington has four points. 
12 point ball game. One second to go. The long pass to Hopgood, and that's it. Louisville has won their ninth Metro Conference Tournament Championship, 90 78. Louisville defeats VCU today. Terry, final points. No question in my mind that Louisville's the best team in this conference. They deserve it. Danny Crumb deserve it. Both will go, I think, to the NCAA tournament, and both teams are playing very well right now. That man's club, I think, is uh, going to scare some people in the uh, NCAA a week from now. Danny Crumb's team now 20 and 8. 18 of the last 22 years, Denny Crum has won 20. Virginia Commonwealth, 20 and 9. So, 9078 Louisville, the final today. Let's go. Brian Jim Brinson. All right, guys, thank you very much. A great job calling this Metro Conference Tournament for three days. We have been here staffing at the Freedom Hall Complex, and it has been a spectacular Metro Conference, and it ends in wonderful fashion. The host team, Louisville, advancing on as they win the tournament. They get the automatic bid. Tulane and VCU will have to wait and see what the Tournament Selection Committee will decide. It is Louisville 90, VCU 78, the final score here in the championship game of the Metro Conference Tournament. For Fred, Terry, I'm Jim Brinson. Have a great afternoon, everybody.